How's it going everyone? Cody Bernardi here with another YouTube video and in today's video we are going to be going down another rabbit hole on Showdown. Now I had a live stream last night on my Discord server which you have not joined yet already. Link is down in the description. Feel free to join that. We do OSINT challenges and all sorts of other things providing resources and links and stuff like that and other giveaways that I do uh, such as a free DEF CON ticket which I gave away this year. So definitely check that out down below. Anyways, uh, so uh, I had a stream last night on there. Uh, just go down the rabbit hole on Shodan, uh, exploring different uh, systems um, and hypothetically talking about causing the most damage to data centers and co-locations as possible um, using things we find on Shodan. So uh, in this video, I'm just going to be going over different ways you can find things like webcams, ICS, uh, point of sale systems. Uh, and other Windows uh, systems that don't have any sort of authentication, as well as exposed databases and SMB and such like that. And then other like little tips on Shodan that you might not see anywhere else. Uh, so without further ado, let's get on my screen. Okay, so like I mentioned, um, we are gonna be going down the rabbit hole on Shodan and I'm gonna log in real quick. Uh, like I mentioned, we're gonna be doing things like finding webcams, we're gonna be finding ICS, uh, and systems that data centers run on. So in theory, uh, you could cause complete mayhem in an entire data center using this one simple trick. Um, so stay tuned for all that. So anyways, uh, so if you haven't seen my other Shodan videos, feel free to check those out. I have a beginner and advanced use case uh, Shodan video. So that's going to be more tailored towards the uh, if you're brand new to Shodan. This is if you've been using Shodan for a little bit. These are other tricks and stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to be saying terms in here that uh, might throw a beginner off. So anyways, um, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at facets. So we're going to do some facet analysis, and I'll explain to you what a facet is because you will see that terminology used in their API guide, but it doesn't really explain what a facet is. Uh, so yeah, let's just dive straight into it. So we're just going to do a very basic search. Country uh, US. Uh, no, let's not do that. Let's do state uh wy so we're gonna do wyoming so what a facet is is this search right there so wy is a facet so you could replace that with wa for washington or bc for british columbia or whatever so that's a facet this is a filter state is a filter this is a filter port organization, products, those are filter, these are facets. So what we're gonna do from here is we're gonna click on view report. And this will allow us to see just kind of a high level view of what Shodan has when I search state Wyoming. Uh, it tells us the top ports, the top organizations, top vulnerabilities, uh, the single country that that uh, facet is part of, WI, top products and all that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click more on any of these. Any of them work, doesn't matter. Just click on more. And this will allow us to break down this search right here by a facet. So in this case, uh, we'll do uh, OS. And it's going to break down all of these different facets. So we have Ubuntu and Aces WRT. These are the different tags that you can search in Wyoming. So let's go ahead and take a look at it all the available facets available on Shodan. So we're gonna do a net zero slash zero. This may or may not work. Typically uh, the slash zero doesn't work. It looks like it did in this case. So these are all of the available facets for tag. So we have cloud, CDN, self-signed, um, DevOps, ICS. Um, so that's facet analysis. Now let's take a look at the available screenshots because this is what everyone likes to use Shodan for. When you just start people tend to do when they first start out on Shodan, they like to look at screenshots. Uh, not screenshots, but uh, webcams and such. So there is screenshot.label, so that is a filter on Shodan. So we're gonna take a look at all of the available screenshot labels uh, that we can search on Shodan. Because there's more than just webcam. There is desktop, login, Windows, webcam, blank, terminal, POS, screensaver, logged in, and ICS. Those are some pretty nice ones. And Shodan does uh, some sort of OCR to determine, uh, you know, if it's a desktop login or a webcam. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy webcam <clears throat> and we'll actually open up a new uh, Shodan search. So we'll do screenshot label and then we will put webcam right in there and see what we get. So we have 132,000 results 
and we will click on browse images. Now I'm gonna show you a little trick that you might not know. Um, so I've talked about in the past where you could do like port 80 comma 443 comma 8443 comma 8080, you know, all the available HTTP ports. Well, little did I know at the time that Shodan actually takes this as a valid search. So we will do this exact search just on Shodan and I will show you what I'm talking about. So HTTP means that Shodan will search everything that has that service running on it. So you can see port 80. We would have missed port 81. We would have missed port 82 if we just listed out all the ports. So if I click on port 82, which by default is not, I don't think is an HTTP port, but you can run any service on any port. So we'll click here and you can see that we're connecting to port 82. And just like that, we connected to a webcam that's running on port 82. So fun fact. So you could do um, that HTTP or minus HTTP if you want to collect RTSP stuff. So fun fact uh, you could do right there. So we're going to click on browse images again. And all of the, the results we're going to have on this search are going to be ones that we could click on. Um, so all of these are webcams that are running on port whatever. So in this case, port 80. So we'll click on that. This might be a good uh, OSINT challenge. Um, let's see, we have Runway Northwest Live. We may or may not have uh, PTZ control. It looks like we might have it. So let's take a look. Audio on maybe? Nope, don't have that. Okay. Uh, let's click on Zoom. Let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. So N24998. So let's do a little OSINT challenge, shall we? So it looks like this is in Sisters, Oregon, and it went on a flight yesterday. So this is at airport 6K5. Let's see where that's at. So Sister Eagle Airport. Sisters Eagle Airport. So we'll copy that. Uh, it doesn't look like that we got much there for uh, Google Street View, unfortunately. Uh, let's see, we'll go center pan maybe, nope. We'll just zoom all the way back out. Okay, so the road is right there and this looks like it's at the very tail end of the runway. So that camera, oh, it might be on the other side. Yeah, it might be over here. I don't know. I'm not going to bother with that, but it's that camera is like right here or something like that right up there. Uh, but yeah, so that that is finding webcams. Now let's take a look at um, some other stuff. So you saw on that facet analysis, we have Windows, Webcam, POS and ICS. Let's take a look at what they have for ICS. So we'll do ICS and then we'll remove that HTTP search parameter right there. And uh, yeah, there you go. So a lot of these are going to be uh, this HMI. So it's called uh, HMI is human machine interface, uh, which is basically the screen on uh, a control system that will allow a human to interact with that said system. So in this case, you see all of these different HMIs. Um, this one's running Windows CE. <laughs> there we go. Oh. Boom. So this this is ICS. You know, you could go down this rabbit hole if you want to. Uh, you're not going to get much as far as you know stuff you could do, especially if it's like a Seymour panel. But let's see if we do uh, do VNC. So VNC. I think I connected to that one the other day. Yeah. No idea. <laughs> no idea what that is. Um, and. If we take a look at this one, we see authentication disabled. So what we could probably do from here is we will take uh, that return code RFB003008. And let's see what happens. And of course, we can uh, we can just browse the images. So we'll just browse images and I'll make it a little easier for us to sort through and see which one's the juicy one to take a look at. So you can see that some of these don't even have a uh, screenshot. So this one has a label as logged in. Anywho, that's that. So those are screenshot labels. So, so far we have covered facet analysis uh, and looking at the different screenshot labels. Let's go ahead and take a look uh, for some exposures on Shodan. 
Uh, so we're going to do things like open SMB on the internet. So SMB is server message block, which is how communi uh, computers communicate with one another inside of a network. So if you've ever mounted a, uh, a network drive, it uses SMB. So we're going to do port 445. And you can already see that I've had some searches on there of previous uh, previous SMB searches. So we'll, we'll take a look right here. So we see uh, a response of this, authentication enabled, SMB version one. Uh, we could see the actual OS version that this system has. Uh, but for the most part, all of these have uh, authentication enabled, but you can see this one has it disabled and you can see the different network folders it has in here. Just saying. So we're gonna take this specific little search term, authentication disabled, um, and search that to see what we get. And what you could do from here is, uh, let's say you're doing a pen test, you're able to actually mount uh, this IP address and you can recursively search these folders uh, using something like grep to find things like tax, or you can use a regular expression to match anything that is like a social security number or something like that. Um, but yeah, and, and scrolling down, you could see um all of these you can even start to enumerate things that might be a domain admin or not domain admin but a domain controller so if we do sys volume sys vol see if anything shows up with that we got 197 results with sys vol on it so um yeah there's that and you could you could do other searches you could do taxes or employees or health maybe or doctor or nurses or whatever. So health medical records right there. Um, credentialing. So there's that. That's, a, that's finding exposures like that online. Now let's go ahead and let's go down what I mentioned earlier. I kind of skimmed over it real quick, uh, but we're going to be talking about um, causing complete mayhem in data centers. Now, for those that don't know, I used to be a network operations center technician, or NOC tech for short. Uh, and basically my whole job was remote hands. And uh, what that means is I would go to a physical server on a customer's behalf and you know unplug a cable, swap out a hard drive or whatever the case may be. Um, and within a data center, there are plenties of redundancies put into place. Um, and what that basically means is uh, all of the infrastructure, inside of a data center um, has some sort of redundancy except for a few things. So um, things like the power, uh, the utility power. So uh, pretty much every data center has some sort of power coming from a utility company um, of some sort. So whether that's hydroelectric or whatever, they'll mainly rely on that power. Um, they'll have a redundancy of things like UPS's un uninterruptible power supplies, which are just giant batteries on site. Um, they'll have, uh, a diesel generator, uh, to run the site in case the power does go out. The diesel generators will take the load. Um, they will have redundancies in cooling. So computer room air conditioning units or crack units, CRAC. Um, and yeah, I mean, and then ISPs. So they'll have a couple ISPs going into the building in case there's one, ISP that has an internet issue or some outage, they will just transfer the load to another ISP. So, I mean, there's tons of redundancies. You'll see terms like N plus one, N plus two used at data centers. Now being a network operation or a knock tech, there's a few weaknesses that I have noticed working in a few uh, data centers. Um, not everything is N plus one. Uh, the few things that are not N plus one are the actual UPSs, the rack mounted UPSs, uh, which are usually sit at the very bottom of a data center or a, a server rack. Um, and it's just a, a battery bank, um, that the PDUs, which is another weakness, uh, where there sometimes may not be an N plus one, uh, which is the power distribution unit. So the power distribution unit is basically just a giant power strip, um, that you plug all of the, uh, servers into, um, and then the PDUs plug into the UPS and then the UPS connects to the, uh, 
probably facility UPS or yeah, all that. I mean, there's so much that goes into it. I'll try to draw out a diagram, but. Okay, so I'm gonna pause the video real quick because I kind of want to explain um, how data center facilities kind of work. And, and apologies, it's been quite some time since I've actually worked in a data center, but this is, this is kind of how I remember things. So right here, you have the utility power, which uh, the normal cycle is the utility power feeds into what's called the ATS, which is the automatic transfer switch which basically switches uh, kind of the power from utility. If that goes offline, then it goes over to uh, battery powered in the UPS room. So these are literally giant batteries in a dedicated room. Like they're just, I mean, they look like servers, but they're just batteries. And while that's happening, it triggers the diesel generator on site to kick on that takes some time to spin up. It has a glow plug in it, and it, it just takes a little time for that to get to capacity where it can support an entire data center. While that's going on, the batteries can last for, I, I believe the places I've worked at could support the data center for about 30 minutes on battery power. And while the generator is kicking on, once it's at capacity, then it feeds down this way, charges the batteries, and then you get into the server rack. So the UPSs, they go through um, kind of like another PDU room. Uh, I didn't draw that out because I wasn't too familiar. I never really interacted with those. But from the UPS room, then it goes into the individual servers. Uh, from the server rack, it goes from the uh, server UPS itself. Um, so from the server UPS, then it goes into the PDU, the power distribution unit, um, which is just the... Uh, power brick into the servers themselves now the single points of failure not in the ups room because there's going to be multiple ups's in there but the power line going from the ups room or the pdu room to the actual ups itself in the server rack um, now obviously some data centers will have two ups's and two pdu's you'll see uh, just a little bit ago that I had a picture of PDUs and there was two of them. Those are on two separate circuits. So in a true N plus one, you'd have that one server and you'd have two of these, two of these, multiples of these, multiples of these, multiples of these, and if you can, multiples of those. Um, so if you do some good recon, your easiest targets are going to be up the chain. So obviously this is going to be a little bit more difficult to hit. Uh, if you just hit straight up the utility company. Uh, but this ATS right there is another good one because that ATS, if it's not true M plus one, will knock the entire data center offline. And those also have a network connection on them. Uh, so you can do some research. I don't know any companies off the top of my head that make ATSs, but it's called automatic transfer switch or automated transfer switch. And that's its whole job is to transfer from utility to generator to ups power and all that so i'll let you have at that and figure uh figure out all that on your own shodan rabbit hole on with the video the few places i've been um they only had one ups per rack and one pdu per rack um i've been to some places where they have a true n plus one where they have two ups's plugged to two different pdu's and those two pdu's are on two different circuits and, and like if one circuit was to trip, the other circuit would continue to work. Um, but there, the, the few places I've been uh, and I've seen do not have that. So we're going to attack data center infrastructure. If you cannot, um, you know, take down a system directly and go and straight for the website and their databases and such like that uh, and cause all sorts of mayhem, uh, and you know, spending all your time and resources on something like a DDoS attack or something like that, um, you know, you might not get much luck. But you'll definitely have luck if you just knock off the uh, power to the server. So we're going to do some basic reconnaissance online. So we are going to go on the Googs, and we are going to look up. Um, and I and I know what. Uh, companies and manufacturers to search for, but I just want to see what Google produces. So we're going to look up uh, server UPS manufacturers. Okay. 
So we have Eaton, which I actually recognize that name. I forgot about them. So we have, let's take a look at nine best UPSs. So APC, CyberPower, um, another APC, Amazon Basics, had no idea. Triplight, oh, that's another one I forgot about. Triplight, um, another APC, Triplight, never heard of this brand. Eaton. So what we can do from here is do some uh, further digging. So we have three brands I want to look into, UP, or, uh, APC, Eaton, and Triplight. And we're going to find some user guides uh, for those systems. And right away we have some basic user guides, but I did this on my stream last night. So let's, let's try to boil this down a little bit more um, and try to make it a little easier on ourselves. So we know the, their website is eaton.com. So what we're going to do is site eaton.com. And we're going to put in user guide. And then we're going to do password. And network card, eaton gigabit network card. Uh, we'll put in UPS. Let's see what we get. And we're just kind of spraying and praying hoping that one of these ends up being what we want. So this may work. Um, it says UPS data, uh, let's control A or control F password, username, admin, admin. Okay, maybe. Okay, so now we will go back to Shodan and we will look up, um, we'll just put Eaton. See what we find. We might be able to get a favicon. We might be able to get an HTTP title. Who knows? Let's just do a basic search and see what we get. So we have right away vendor eaten. Type UPS. So this is looking good. This right there is looking good. So we might be able to do vendor eaten. Control C that. And ftp.eaton.com. Okay. Oh. Boom. That's what we're looking for right there. Favicon hash. So we'll take that out and we will do this. 159 results. Okay. There we go. Okay. So we're logged in as a guest now. <laughs> Not sure what I can do from here. I, you know what? I'm not going to even bother moving on with this one. This is just a good example. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, first time's a term, I guess. Okay, so we got that. Uh, now let's take a look at for like UPS. We will do APC next, and then we will do HTTP 200. So APC HTTP 200. See what we get because you get 401s. Now we don't have 401s, we have HTTP 200s. And you can click on any of these, it's going to be the APC logon. And I believe the username is APC, password is admin. Good to go. And you could shut the uh, UPS off and all that. Now, I would continue on this video, but it is pretty long as it is right now. Uh, but there's other systems, like I mentioned, cr uh, crack units. Uh, those are mainly ran by Siemens and Liebert. Um, and those also have uh, web interfaces that you can explore. But yeah, so anyways, that is it for this video. If y'all enjoy content like this, please hit the thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button with the bell notification enabled. I am going to go war driving here shortly. I only have one day of the worldwide war driving CTF uh, because I am flying out to Las Vegas for DEF CON tomorrow. I will be bringing my camera um, and I will be participating in the Trace Labs CTF this Saturday. So stay tuned for that. I don't think I could film that um, for obvious reasons, uh, but I will, I will have my laptop with me laptops multiple um and yeah if any of you are in town hit me up uh join my discord just uh, go to the defcon meetup just say hey what up and we can we can meet up i might have swag i don't know that's actually a good thing if i check to see if i have anything so anyways that's it for this video y'all take care goodbye